Spain is a very popular destination in Europe for real estate investment and it's predicted to be one of the top five in 2022. And if you're watching this video, it may be that you're considering buying a property in Spain or you're simply looking at what are the costs associated with it. So that's what we're gonna go into in this video. We're gonna look in depth at all the costs that are involved with buying a property in Spain. And what I'm also gonna tell you in this video is what are some of the costs associated once you own that property and when it comes to selling that property as well. So let's get right into the video. Welcome to Millennials with Money. My name is Johnny. Thank you for joining me for this video. Let's get this money. Now, as a general rule of thumb, when you buy a property in Spain, you can probably estimate the total costs of the buying process to be around 10 to 15% of the property. And so I'm gonna break down what that 10 to 15% uh, is normally made up of. And I'm also gonna give you an idea of some of the costs that come with owning the property as well. And when it's time to sell it, what kind of costs can you expect as well? So let's start with the costs involved with buying a property. So when you buy a property, the biggest cost normally associated with it is either the VAT uh, that you pay if it's a brand new uh, construction, if it's a new build, or the ITP, which stands for Impuesto Sobre Transmisión de Patrimonios, which is if you're buying a second-hand property. So the VAT, or known as IVA in Spain, only applies if you're buying a new build or a brand new development and you're the first person that's buying it. And the standard rate applied when it comes to new properties is 10%. Now, when it comes to IPT, things are a little bit different because it all depends on the autonomous community that you're buying in. If you're not aware, Spain is divided up into 17 autonomous governing regions and they have autonomy over things such as how much tax people pay on their income and also on matters like this, such as um, taxes when it comes to selling things on to another person. So let's take an example. Let's say you're looking to buy a property in the community of Madrid, then you'll be looking at paying about 6% of ITP on the property that you're going to buy. Now compare that with Catalonia, for example. So let's say you're gonna buy a property in Barcelona, then you'll be looking at 10 to 11% of ITP. So let's again take our example of the 200,000 euro house. If you were to buy a 200,000 euro property in the community of Madrid, then you would only be looking at paying around 12,000 euros of ITP. Whereas if you were to buy it in Barcelona, then you'd be looking at 20 to 22,000 euros in ITP. So this can be a major factor that influences your decision on where to buy a property. You have communities such as Madrid, um, and the Basque country where the ITP is a little bit lower. And then you have regions of Spain such as Catalonia, such as the Valencian community and such as the Balearic Islands where the ITP is a little bit higher. So I'll put the link to those um, in the description so that you can go and check them out in your own time. And another thing to keep in mind is that some autonomous communities, depending on whether you're buying this as a second property, for example, or whether you're buying it as your primary residence, may also apply different ITP rates as well. Some autonomous communities apply the same rate um, regardless, but others um, may apply different rates in each case. So another thing worth checking out. Now, another cost that you'll have to pay as a buyer is when you do the tasación or the valuation of the property. Now, if you're going through a bank and you're taking out a mortgage to get this property, the bank will definitely um, do a tasación or valuation of the property to get an idea of its value to see if they can really loan you the amount of credit that they had initially proposed to you. However, even if you're not going through a bank, it might be a good idea to get a professional surveyor to do this valuation of the property as they will look right down to the very details of the construction, the materials that are used, etc., etc. Um, and based on that, they will come up with the real value of the property. And the cost of the tasación will really depend on the size of the property. It can range from 200 euros for some smaller properties up to about 500 euros if you're looking at a bigger property. And the other costs you'll have associated with buying the property are the notary fees, the registry costs, and any management costs. Now, the notary will typically cost you probably in the thousand euro ballpark, just a little bit below, and then um, registry of the property will cost around four to 500 euros 
and management fees again around the three to four hundred euro ballpark so you can probably expect around two thousand euros um, for these three costs so you've gone ahead and bought your property now what are the costs that you can expect to pay as a homeowner in spain so one of the first things that you'll have to pay and this will apply if you live in an apartment in a block of apartments are comunidad or is comunidad i don't know You'll have to pay Comunidad if you live in an apartment um, in a block of apartments. Now, what Comunidad is, is a monthly amount and it goes towards essentially the upkeep of the building that you live in. So cleaning services, um, if it has an elevator, if it has a pool, um, if there are repairs that are needed on the building, then Comunidad uh, goes towards this. Now, without actually going to see a property and inquiring, it's difficult to give an estimation of how much Comunidad will cost you. But but generally speaking, the more services the building has, for example, if it has an elevator, if you live in a building and it has a pool, if it has central heating, for example, then these are all gonna push the comunidad costs up per month. If you're living in an older building, perhaps it doesn't have an elevator and it has just basic maintenance, then it's gonna be a lot lower. If I was to give a range, I would say anything starting from around 30 euros a month uh, at the very, very bottom end of the scale for older buildings that don't have a lot of services a lot of facilities up to the hundreds of euros for some of these buildings that have more services as I just described before and as someone who pays comunidad and a member of the comunidad or the community we can say um, you get the right to have a say on issues that pertain to the building so for example if there's a discussion about putting an elevator in the building if there are refurbishments that are needed if there's a particular pain point that's bothering everyone and the community wants to put money towards solving it then you get a say in that and your money as well um, will go towards solving that. It's really important that you do stay on top of your Comunidad payments because um, if you don't, then you could end up in legal problems. Um, the Comunidad could decide to go after you and reclaim the missed payments plus interest. And as well, if you don't up to date with the payments, then it will go on the Nota Simple, which is kind of the, the simple um, register of the property as a charge against the property. Another cost you'll have as an owner in Spain is property tax and it's known as as EB here, which stands for Impuestos Sobre Bienes Inmuebles. And the EB of the property um, is based on its catastrophe value. Now, honestly, it's not really worth worrying about the catastrophe value of the property. Simply, when you go uh, to visit um, a property, if you're interested in it, you can inquire with the owner or with the estate agent, and they'll be able to tell you how much the annual property tax is. Now, depending on the autonomous community, um, it may be paid at different points in the year. For example, in Madrid, it's between May and June, if I'm not mistaken mistaken um, but that property tax is only paid once a year and it's normally the same amount every year as well and then of course you'll have your utility bills you will need to speak to the water company to get set up um, they'll come in and do readings now and again um, so you need to go and get the water set up um, and as well obviously the electricity and the gas if applicable as well whilst we're on the topic of electricity as this is a hot topic in Spain and has been for the past year or so it's worth noting that there are two uh, tariff systems in Spain. You have what is known as the Mercado Libre and the Mercado Regulado. Now the Mercado Libre, if I'm not mistaken, means that the electricity companies have more flexibility over the tariffs they can set and the Mercado Regulado is based on uh, carbon emissions rights um, in Europe which determines the electricity price and this has been the, um, the tariff and the system that has been um, in the news a lot recently in Spain with the prices going up over the past year. Um, several hundred percent so if you do opt for electricity it's definitely um, worth considering the Mercado Libre instead of the Mercado Regulado. If you rent out your property as well and you generate rental income from that property you'll be liable to pay uh, what is known as IRPF in Spain essentially income tax so IRPF is Impuestos sobre la renta de personas físicas and that is declared in your tax declaration every year. Now, whether you do this as a resident, as a non-resident, that will very much depend on your tax status, but you will have to declare any rental income 
um, in your tax declaration as well. It is worth noting as well that if you have a mortgage or if you have not decided to put uh, the utility bills in the tenant's name and you've kept them in your name as the property owner, then you will get up to a 60% tax deduction in the, uh, the annual declaration as well. And of course, if you decide to sell the property, then you'll be liable for either capital gains tax or the plus valia municipal, depending on which one you choose. Now, the government changed the law on this recently last year so that you as a seller um, can make the decision of what works best for you in terms of taxes that you pay. Now, the plus valia municipal is a little bit complicated, so I'll try and keep this simple. Essentially, again, it takes the catastrophe value of your property multiplied by a set of coefficients and depending on how many years you've had the property um, this will then be multiplied by um, a percentage so the longer you've held the property then the lower that coefficient will be the idea is that this prevents people uh, from house flipping and making quick short-term gains or the other method which is a bit more simple is the real capital gains which is essentially paid on the base of how much uh, your property has increased in value uh, since you purchased it and then you'd pay a percentage of tax on that. So when it does come around to selling it is worth considering I'll see if I can find something a little bit specific about the plus valia municipal about how it's calculated so that you could do the theoretical calculation if it's time for you to sell. And now the final costs I want to talk about relate to if you take out a mortgage to get your property so there are some additional specific costs that you may incur if you do take out a mortgage for your property. So because of low interest rates over the past year um, um, the banks in Spain have been engaged in almost a mortgage wars um, and lots of the banks have been fighting to attract clients to get um, them to take out mortgages with them and one of the ways they've been doing this is through vinculaciones essentially trying to get you to take on additional products with the bank in exchange for a lower interest rate on your mortgage so the typical ones you'll see are maybe um, getting your pay slip uh, paid into an account in that bank uh, taking out life insurance with them um, taking out your home insurance uh, so your property insurance through them as well or maybe even and taking out you know a pension plan or investment product with them as well it all depends on the bank but these are some of the most common uh, vinculaciones that you'll see when you take out a mortgage in Spain and so just to touch on a couple of these so home insurance is something that a bank will pretty much oblige you to take out if you do take out a mortgage with them uh, for at least the value of what's known as the continente so the bare bones and structure of the property um, and your home insurance it will very much depend on what the property is but you'll probably be looking at several hundred euros a year and life insurance as well now these life insurance products that the banks sell they're not life insurance in the traditional sense essentially what they cover is in the case of death or permanent disability where you can't work and you no longer have an income then it means that that life insurance covers the the pending debt on the property so it's not really a necessity to take out what you need to consider is if the annual cost of that life insurance which will probably be again a couple of hundred euros will save you more in interest on the uh, mortgage. In my case, it did, so I took one out, um, but it's worth doing the calculation just to see if uh, by, you know, by taking out an additional product, you do end up saving on the interest rate. And the final cost I wanna talk about is if you decide to pay off your mortgage early. Now in countries like the US, the UK, if you pay off your mortgage, great. The value of the debt goes down and it simply means you pay off that debt sooner. However, in Spain, in many banks, they will charge you if you try to pay off your debt early and the bank incurs a financial loss. So it is worth considering before you make any overpayment on your mortgage, consult with the bank and see if they would incur a financial loss as a result of you overpaying and would they charge you additional commissions for overpaying on your mortgage. In some cases, if there's no financial loss, then they can't charge you. Then they can't typically overcharge you for it. But if there is a financial loss, then there is a chance that they might apply um, up to a one or two percent additional commission on that. So it's definitely worth keeping in mind. So we've pretty much covered all the costs associated with buying a property in Spain. Leave a comment and let me know if you found this helpful and if you'd like to see more videos on Spanish property. Now, why not check out my other videos? And if you like this one and you want to see more content like it, then make sure you hit the subscribe button with the notification bell so you don't miss a single update. I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money.